So yesterday, we had a vestry retreat, and at that vestry retreat, when it started on, um, on, Monday, on, on Saturday morning, I, um, I was given a gift, um, one of those gifts that you are uh, 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 both amused to receive, and you know it comes with a little punch, too. And so, um, so my outgoing senior warden, uh, Matt Aldridge, and my incoming uh, a junior warden, Faith Westerman, um, decided they would give me a gift. And that gift was um, color silk, beautiful color, uh, so I could dye my hair um, uh, blonde. Uh, uh, they, they said um, that uh, I should be careful about throwing stones at, at people who have to use magical products, and that I should learn also how to, how I should use these products. So, um, so that I I got this, and I and I said thank you. Uh, I've always wanted to be a blonde. Uh, I have to have more fun. Uh, so, um, so anyway, I um, I then uh, turned to Darren, and Darren said, if you put that in your hair. I will do anything you ask. <laughs> oh, it was crazy. Uh, so just for that alone, I was about to put this in. And then I turned to Carl Alexander, and he said, if you put that in your hair, I will uh, resign from the vestry. Uh, so I was between a rock and a hard place when it, it came to this, uh, this hair uh, dye. Now, uh, you might say, why are you talking about hair dye? And, and the reason is, and I think uh, both uh, Matt and Faith were uh, making a, 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 a good humored uh, um, uh, poke, and that was, um, uh, be careful about talking about the afflictions of others when you don't have those afflictions, when they are not yours. So, uh, because if you do that, you become a hypocrite really quickly because you're putting burdens on people that you yourself don't have to carry, no matter how heavy or light those burdens might be. So, we have readings today that are really about hypocrisy. Our first reading from Isaiah is really about the prophet Isaiah asking Israel to think about what it means to follow the law. You see, they're doing all of this stuff to make themselves, in some ways, self-satisfied by the law. You see, look at how much good stuff we're doing. We are keeping the law. And then Isaiah says, well, that's great to keep the law, except you don't treat your workers right. You, you don't treat foreigners right. You don't treat each other right. You keep fighting with one another. What does the law matter if you don't treat other people well? He would say, it's pretty empty if you're not actually treating people well. So you can go and be self-satisfied at home and smug and think about how you're better than other people because you follow the law. But Isaiah says, that's empty. Because all that's doing is satisfying yourself. That is, in some ways, Isaiah would say, the heart of hypocrisy. And don't use God's words and God's law as a way of putting other people down so that you can feel better about yourself. Now, this reading from Isaiah is really the heart of of Jesus' Beatitudes. If you want to know where the Beatitudes came, came right here from Isaiah's critique of what the law looked like. Now, the part of the Gospel right before our reading today is, in fact, the Beatitudes. And Jesus, right before the Beatitudes, has called all his disciples together, and he's, he's set out on this journey, and great things are happening. People are being healed. The, the lame can walk, the blind can see. All the great stuff is beginning to happen, and the disciples are beginning to feel good about themselves. And then Jesus says, okay, we're going up a mountain, and I got some, I got some tough stuff I got to give you. And the first thing he gives them is the Beatitudes. And basically the Beatitudes break down to this. 
What are you doing when you receive God's grace and love? What are you doing? Are you using it just to make yourself feel better? Or are you turning around and helping other people? If you aren't helping other people, then there's no point to receiving God's grace. And moreover, all of the law is pretty empty and it's only serving you, not God. So here he is, he's given them the attitudes, he's up here on the mountain, and then he goes, look, it's really easy as a religious teacher to lose your saltiness, to lose your taste, to in some ways fall back to the facile uh, teaching that the Pharisees and the scribes and all the teachers of Israel do, in which they tout the law and they're talking, 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 but they don't do anything. They don't treat other people with respect, all they do is use the law to put heavy burdens on other people. He says, that's wrong. If you're really going to be a teacher for Israel, you've got to have some zest to you. You've got to have some tastiness to you. You have to shine out your light so that others may not just hear you talk, but can actually see the goodness of your actions. They gotta know that the light of God's grace is coming out from you. If that can't be perceived, then all the words in the world are just empty. There's nothing there. And he goes on, he says, look, you gotta put your light up on a lampstand, not under a bushel basket, because look, this receiving of God's grace, this is about community. It's about more than you just getting something or me just getting something. It's about passing on what it is that you've been given by God. Have you been given love by God? Great, share it with somebody. Have you been given grace? Have you seen salvation? Great, share it with somebody. And Jesus says, that's at the heart of what we're going to do. You cannot be a disciple if you're going to be self-satisfied about how much you have and somebody else doesn't have nearly as much. And then he goes on further in the next paragraph and he says, look, I'm not here to abolish the law. In fact, there couldn't be anything further from the truth. Not one law, one word or one, one iota actually is what it says in the Greek will be struck from the law until all things have come to be. In other words, this, I've come to fulfill the law. I've come to show you what it means to live into the law truly. In fact, everything that I say is in accord with all of the prophets and all of the law. You can't, in other words, just follow the laws so that you feel better about yourself. The law, as Jesus will say, leads to two things. Loving God with all your heart, mind, soul, and being, and loving your neighbor as yourself. If those two things don't happen, there is, in fact, no law, he would say. There's just emptiness. He goes on further and he says, look, the heart of what it means to be a hypocrite is to make somebody else follow the law while you're not following the law. To make somebody else pick up heavy burdens when you don't have to pick up those heavy burdens. So he says to them, look, you're going to follow the law, but you're going to do it in such a way that others know that they are loved by God and that they are loved by you. And in following the law, you will show the love of God to all those that you meet. In fact, you will bring them into the light. He goes on further and he says, look, you want to be in the kingdom of heaven, not kind of at the doorstep of the kingdom of heaven? You're going to have to be better than the Pharisees and the scribes. In other words, those people who don't really follow the law, but make everybody else do difficult stuff in the name of the law. You want to be in the kingdom of heaven? Pull somebody up and bring them into the kingdom of heaven with you. You want to be in the kingdom of heaven? Make others see the light of God. You want to be in the kingdom of heaven? Share what it is that God gave you with other people. And Jesus says, look, 
You knew that's what Isaiah was talking about. You knew that's what the prophets were really talking about. You know that's what the law is really talking about. The law isn't about making yourself self-satisfied. The law isn't about making yourself better than somebody else. The law and the prophets, he said, are all about bringing your brothers and sisters with you into the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus <coughs> is saying to them, basically, you know all those blessings that you think the world thinks are blessings? Having a big house or a fancy car or nice clothes or nice blonde hair. <laughs> I'm sorry about that, Patsy. <laughs> well, you're going to have to think again about what a blessing is. He says a blessing, from God's perspective, looks a whole lot different than what it looks like from Caesar's position, from the Pharisee's position, and from the scribe's position. A blessing looks like a heart that is ripped open by God's love and in which the light of Christ pours out to all those that you meet. <coughs> Blessings look like a heart that is transformed and it looks like a community that loves its brothers and sisters. True blessing. The blessing that keeps the saltiness of salt and the light of light is when the love of God is shared with everyone that we meet, no matter who they are or where they're from.